Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jerome Style, and I have a beer. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> ah, you know, beer. Beer is such a magical thing. It's been around for ages, centuries, and it's such amazing liquid that we consume daily countless amounts of beer just with four ingredients your water your hops your malt and your yeast you can make a plethora of different style of beers now this video I wanted to shed some light on something that's happened to me recently and I've experienced and it's working to help make this beer Oh yeah! <laughs> it's good stuff. So you like beer like me. You like beer like a lot of people like beer. Beer industry itself is such a sexy industry. You have these beer commercials just pumping out how cool it is to have that beer in your hand. And look up on it and say, you know what? I'm cool. And everyone else thinks I'm cool. And the ladies dig it too, and they think I'm cool because I have a beer. Not just any beer, but a specific brand that I'm loyal to kind of beer. Yeah. This is where everything comes together and you enjoy your life because of beer. So because of that, you wanted to get into the beer industry. You wanted to experience the rush, the sensation of what it's like to make beer, to call something that you make proud, that you've put your effort, your sweat into. And then you get to take it home and drink it up as much as you like. Your friends are going to enjoy it too. You get to share the wealth of working in a brewery to make something that you care about, the craft of beer. So you got your resume ready and you're ready for that job. You. You're, you're sending it out there to all the breweries. You do brewery tours to see the magic of what goes behind the product that you see. And maybe you're lucky just like me and you got yourself an interview. Not only an interview, but you got yourself hired to work in a brewery where everything is going to be just fine. This is the industry that people want to get into. They quit their day jobs and try something brand new. It's a midlife crisis. Go ahead, work in a brewery, you know? This is where people starve themselves to come to. <laughs> the brewery. And I'm going to tell you something. With my experience, it's not as sexy as, it's, as they say it is. In fact, it's quite stressful. And it was a whole lot of, what is this? Is this the magical world of beer? Or did I get myself into just another job? There was a dose of reality that I think a lot of us need about the beer industry. And I'm gonna tell you guys what I experienced from there. So stay tuned, I hope you guys enjoy, and beer! Woohoo! So you're on the active payroll. You are part of the team. And as part of the team, you get some gear. Well, depending on which microbrewery you go to, or brewery. Uh, I worked in the microbrewery, and if most microbreweries, to my knowledge, they supply you with the equipment you need to do your job. And the equipment you need is a lot of safety stuff. <laughs> you obviously need safety glasses. You need some uh, work clothes, such as this shirt, um, some nice work pants. Also, you get some sweet ooh, steel toe boots. <laughs> and you also, depending on the brewery, you might also get some steel toe rubber boots. So you get your safety gear. And the reason why you need all this gear is because you're working with some serious shit. <laughs> you are working with some dangerous chemicals in the brewery. 
and you may not know this, uh, but in order to keep things clean, in order to keep things sanitized so that we can pump out as much beer as we can, we need to make sure we have the right cleaning agents to do that. And most of those agents are pretty rough, like strong acid and caustic uh, chemicals. Also a sanitizer, which you use to make sure things are sanitized. But the chemical that you normally get it in is not is concentrated. So you have to dilute it. And if you don't dilute it, you can get all kinds of white spots or a big splat, whatever. Maybe you just pour a whole bunch on you. Um, it's going to burn because it's an acid. And it's going to just color your skin for a while. So you work with some nasty stuff. Uh, not just, you know, you could be careful all you want. But you can also breathe in the fumes from it, which is not pleasant at all. Um, so you need to have your safety gear. And if it's a good microbrewery, they'll supply you with everything you need free of cost, which is awesome. So before I shit <laughs> on the brewing industry, in a, sorry, in working in a brewery, there is some positive in that they make sure you're safe to do your job right, or they should at least. And safety gear is one of that. There's also some perks with working in a brewery, which we all, you know, assume is free beer. <laughs> you know, I work, I'm going to a brewery so I can get beer. That's what I came here for. Beer so I can drink it and enjoy it. Well, yes, you get to have some free beer, which is awesome. Uh, where I worked, I had actually a food allowance where it was $25 a day for food. And that was enough to get my meal and a beer. So that not only helped me with like my grocery bills, but I mean, I get like a prepared meal, hot meal and a beer, which is awesome, especially at the end of the day, like having a beer to finish your work day. That was awesome. That was an amazing perk. And chances are, if you work in a microbrewery, you're going to have something similar to that. You may not have food depending on the place, but you may get like a free beer a day or maybe after a certain while like three months you can take a keg a small little keg like maybe a 10 liter or so back home whatever beer you want maybe every month every two weeks depends where you are my place was actually apparently every two weeks so that is also an awesome incentive the other thing is there's also like beer festivals or uh, kind of beer you know brewery get-togethers it doesn't happen too often, but you can get like free uh, tickets to go to like a beer festival, or you can actually attend it and be the person, you know, selling the or not selling, but like supplying the beer. Or you can go to where a bunch of breweries get together and just basically get drunk <laughs> and have a good time. That's probably the biggest perks I would say about working in a brewery. There's a lot of you know opportunities for having a good time outside of work now let's focus on the work <laughs> what you signed up for and it's not very pretty so the first real grim reality of when you finally get to work in a brewery like I kind of mentioned before is the chemicals there's a lot of dangerous things that can pretty much kill you in the brewery uh, that I did not expect uh, when I came there. Uh, so besides the chemicals, uh, there, <laughs> which is which is big, there's a lot of like hidden things. And what I mean is like, it may appear like it could be dangerous, but it's just oh whatever, you know, like a forklift. That's basically a big giant battering ram, and you don't want to go anywhere near that because the batter the battering ram. <laughs> the forklift is going to win. So the the thing that's hidden about it though is the unfortunate thing about microbreweries is very 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 expensive to get one going. And when you have one going, the biggest issue that every single microbrewery or brewery has is space. Once you fill it up with vessels, your fermentation tanks, your conditioning tanks, your bright beer tanks, your um, your brew kettle, you know, your you like the mash tun, you got like your hot water tank, you got your filtration unit for the water, you got, you know, racking to store all the beer, you got empty kegs everywhere, you got full kegs you need to put away, you got obviously the forklift in the way, 
you have people in the way. It's space is such a huge factor there. And when you're tight in there with 200 plus 300 kegs all around you and you need to push out a grain bin or whatever, there's going to be, the, you have to use the forklift a lot. And the forklift, I had to watch out a couple times when people were driving near me because I was almost trapped in some spots where like, okay, he sees me at least, but if he didn't see me, I'm kind of screwed. Um, yeah, the forklift is really, really dangerous um, because the one thing you're going to be doing is eventually, if you have forklift training or whatever, is going to be using it to move full kegs of beer on a pallet. And usually there's about anywhere from there's 12 to 16 per pallet, depending on the size. And each keg of beer, about 50 liter keg, is about roughly 150 pounds each. So you want to be very, very careful when you have to pick up the uh, beer and the pallet. It's normally wrapped, but there's always that chance that it could fall and basically kill you. <laughs> it, uh, you I mean, you have like racking that's about a couple meters high and it's just on some simple metal frames. I mean, it depends where you work, but honestly, there's been times, I haven't been there, where some of the kegs have actually fallen off, full kegs, and almost like shattered or like burst. And you don't want to be anywhere near that. So working space is really limited, forklift in there, and kegs themselves on racking, you just... Sometimes you have to go up there and move them, and it's heavy, heavy stuff. So kegs can be really heavy, 150 pounds each full. And you're expected to move them. You're expected to transport them. You're expected to stack them. You're expected to uh, deliver them. And it's a huge toll on your back. I mean, you're going to get some nice muscle mass because of it. You're going to get strong, but you're also going to hurt your back or you're gonna do some a huge amount of damage if you don't respect the weight that you're dealing with. And unfortunately with the brewing industry also, it's a very, very stressful industry where it doesn't matter how fast you go, you have to go faster than that. And also when you go do it fast and faster than you normally faster can, at the fastest speed possible, you have to do it right. And it doesn't matter if you've been there for a short period of time, you better pick it up quick. Because beer is all about production. It's about making it, getting it out there to consumers. You want them to have that beer. Get it out the door. Get it out the door. Don't let it sit there. Get it out the door. So that people can drink and drink and drink and the money comes in and it comes in and it comes in. So, if shit ever hits the fan, and likely it will at your brewery, if something halts the brewing process, or you know, like a pipe burst or something, or the hot water tank doesn't work for some reason, or your delivery truck stopped working, or just a number of things that you just, just happens. Anything that holds that process down, it's stress. It's going to be, we got to get this going, going, and going. We might have to do something that takes us twice as long as it normally will, but we expect you to do it as fast as it was before. I've had that experience multiple times, and just to get a picture of what I experienced there, I was there for a short period of time, only not even three months in a brewery. So with that short experience, take everything I say with a grain of salt, but I've seen some things, I've talked to people about it, I've talked to the brewmaster who's been in the industry for over 20 years. I have a good idea of what it's like there. And it's stressful. It's not meant for everyone. And it, obviously it wasn't meant for me. Unfortunately and fortunately. So you got to keep cool and try to do as best as you can. But chances are you're going to be rushed. You're going to be yelled at, uh, which is another unfortunate thing. Depending on where you work, it could be a whole bunch of people that are just real easy going. The chances are there's going to be people that want you to bust your ass. So if you're the kind of guy who just puts his head down, or a woman, puts her head down and just works away and you're, that's what you like, this industry is for you. But if you're kind of the person who doesn't want to hurt themselves and you want to work you know, in an environment where 
you try your best, but you're not trying to hurt yourself, unfortunately, it probably won't, you probably won't last too long. Remember how I mentioned about cleaning? Well, you're going to be doing a lot of that. Not only that, but you're going to be cleaning some nasty stuff. <laughs> uh, mold. The brewery is filled with mold. It doesn't matter how clean you have it, it's going to get mold eventually. And you're going to have to clean it. Uh, black mold, especially. Uh, I've cleaned, crouched down around the whole brewery, scrubbing the baseboards of black mold. I've been on the forklift raised up on the racking where the beer is held, like the full kegs of beer, and scrubbed the racking, the metal frame of black mold. The ceilings are, are, get mold on them, the corners get mold. Everywhere there is mold, and you have to clean it. And it can get so disgusting. Uh, there's times where you have to use a chemical that you need an actual f mask with filters on because the, the powder itself, if you breathe in, is uh, highly acidic and can basically burn your lungs. So you have to wear a mask when you work with stuff like that and then make your solution and scrub the floors. It's a lot of cleaning. Um, cleaning kegs, cleaning the vessels when they're, you know, so they're prepped and so you put beer in it. Once the beer is out of the vessels, you need to clean them so that it's good enough for the next beer. And it's just this ongoing process, this cycle, where you're cleaning and cleaning and cleaning and cleaning. It doesn't matter if you're a brewer, it doesn't matter if you're a back labor guy, you're going to be cleaning a lot. <laughs> Did I get that message across? You're going to be cleaning a lot mold. The other unfortunate thing about working in a brewery, or fortunate, I mean depends on your personality, your character, what you like, you're going to be working with a small group of people. But, because you work with a small group of people all the time, if there's one bad person in that small little group, it can ruin everything. <laughs> It can be absolutely awful, especially if you were in my case and had a person who was the one who trained me or who was in charge and basically got away with a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I was I was subjugated to verbal abuse. And you might be lucky, you might go to a brewery where everyone just gets along and clicks and it's fine, you know? It might be a little stressful, but people click and they work and they, you know, have some laughs and it's all good. But unfortunately for me, I was in a situation where at least one person was so nasty, nasty. Like I got yelled at for the most minute little mistakes or little things. I'll give you an example. Uh, putting kegs into the delivery truck. Um, we had to put them all against the back and then you put your little bar across or whatever. It depends on you, what you're doing. Anyways, kegs are in the truck and they're in there and we're ready to go. But the trainer looks and he noticed something's wrong. And instead of saying, oh, Jeremy, would you mind just looking over there and seeing that mistake you did? Instead it was, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? But, like what? What? What happened? Like, is the truck gonna blow up? Like, what's happening here? Like, oh, what's going on? Why are those kegs not together? It's like this. This should be like that. Why in the very back corner is it fucking like that? Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I, I don't know. I'll, and then he's like, Oh, get out of the way! Fuck! Blah 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 blah. Like throwing kegs out of my way, like almost hitting me, just to make this space go to that. Chances are nothing major when you're doing that delivery truck, when you're driving, is going to, you know, shake the whole thing so like that space is just like an earthquake and then the truck just blows apart. I got <laughs> so many things that I did wrong, like little things like that, little, I got yelled at yelled at not just oh you know like kind of like oh nice job it was like yelled at and i just 
honestly, because of that one person in that small group of people who's all there because they're passionate about beer, it made it so hard to go to work. It made it so hard for me to care about my job. Here I am scrubbing black mold, which sucks already, cleaning stuff. You know, you get tired of repeatedly cleaning the same stuff over and over again. You know, you're doing it because you love beer. You get like those perks, the beer at, at the end of the day, the free food, and you know, maybe some beer later on when you, you, when you get your three months and all that. But it wasn't worth it for me because of that. And I hope if you're in the beer, beer industry, I haven't scared you away from it. But there's some hard there's some hard realities you need to face. If the people you work with are awful, it's going to make everything awful. Because of the stress on top of it, they add another tenfold stress on top of that. On top and top and top. It's it's a you have to have tough skin. And you need to make sure that you do things right. So be a quick learner, you pick things up and you you try to do your best you can. But, you know, sometimes it's not good enough, and then you become the victim like me. And I've had to talk to that specific person a few times, and it still didn't help. So, yeah, that's the other thing. So people play a major part in the positive or negative aspect of the brewery. And when it's negative, there's things besides the yelling, which is completely asinine. Besides that... There's egos. The thing about the brewing world, there's so many beers and so many breweries. And each person has, each brewery has a brewmaster or someone in charge of making, designing, crafting the beers that that brewery makes. Every single brewmaster basically shits on some other brewery saying that place is terrible, our beer is better. That place is okay, but not as good as our beer. Our beer could be a little bit better than, like, you know, compared to the other, because you don't really hear that often. Normally, a brewmaster won't admit <laughs> when their beer is crap, unless it's, you know, complete, like, they did a batch that just completely botched. Um, but for the most part, the stuff that they make, um, overall, they're quite proud of. I mean, it depends where they work. Depends on the recipes. Maybe they're not fully in charge of recipes. Maybe they're making a recipe to suit a certain customer. And the stuff that they want to make, they only do it once in a while. It depends. But there's so many egos in the brewing world. Uh, not just the brewmaster, but the brewers um, and even the back people. You will have, like, the thing with beer, it's a very um, subjective thing. Like, it's taste. Like, everyone has different tastes. But the thing is, if you say, if you try a beer, and there's like four out of five people who enjoyed it, and you're the odd one out who doesn't like it, you can say, I don't like this beer, and then they can go, why? And you're like, oh, it's too bitter. Too bitter for me. They're like, eh. <laughs> depending on the person, obviously, they might say, well, you're wrong. Uh, you need to develop your palate so you can taste those flavors. And in a way, they are correct. I mean, um, it takes a while to get your palate to sense all those flavors. You might hate a beer, but then when you when they tell you what the flavors and the aroma, everything like involved with beer, what it's supposed to be, you can almost, when you look for those flavors, you can actually almost taste it, which is, and then you're like, oh, actually it's not so bad. But, Sometimes you just hate the beer. <laughs> but the thing is they tell you like, oh you're wrong, you know? Like you don't you don't know what you're talking about, kind of a thing. And it kind of sucks, you know. It's like you want to put your input to things, but then it's like you're wrong, you know. Um so you gotta work with egos. You get people who say their way's right and that person's wrong. They'll say, you know, like they'll try to change things if they could, uh, and grumble about it. It's just you got to be real careful about what you think is bad or good and you know just see what the people are so you got to work with egos which really sucks people and people can be real negative it's just um because it's a stressful industry uh you don't you know some people do share some laughs and stuff but sometimes it's just like if you're not part of the group or a click part of that 
group in a group in a smaller group of that small group that can isolate you um, which kind of happened to me and I you know it's just yeah so it, it can be real negative in there too and like I say it could be real positive it just depends where you are but this is, unfortunately is what the brewing industry um, apparently is like so yeah <sighs> So I hope I didn't scare you guys away from beer, uh, or sorry, not beer, of course not, but from working, or maybe you're just curious about what it's like to work in a brewery, this, this sexy industry, this, you know, like, it's a dream job to work in a brewery. And you know what? It could be. It could be if you're the right person for it. Unfortunately, it's a very transient industry. So many people come and go. They come there, they expect things like me that's going to be super cool like you won the lottery of the jobs out there and then it just whew, you get a dose of reality of what it really is and it scares you away so um i hope i kind of opened your eyes you guys's eyes on what it's like to work in a brewery uh i can i'm sure i can say a lot more i've as always talk my mouth my face off and i've done another long video but that's me. That's my style. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Beer is king. It may not be awesome to work for, but, you know, you never know. You might enjoy it. So thanks again for watching. And uh, I'm Jerome Style. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Oh, yeah.